Wagner, tonight we have the 2024 Audi RS3. looking at the front of this car, it is really wide and really aggressive, and you would be correct. They made a big point of making this car so much wider and looking and so much more aggressive than the previous generation. But if you saw it next to, say, an RS6 or an RS7, you may be thinking, it's really wide in the front. What happened in the back? And you'd be correct. The RS3 is only wide body in the front. And if you come in a little bit closer along here, you can see how the even sculpt of this front bumper, not only having the grill surrounds connect to the headlight, give it this really wide view. And then coming in, the characteristic that gives it the widest view is the really aggressive sculpted in vents along here. Now these vents are non-functional. They are just there for looks, but it does give that really wide, aggressive look on the front. The Audi RS3 is powered by the 2.5 liter five cylinder engine. This engine is very special and has actually won the International Engine of the Year Award nine times. It makes 401 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque and goes from 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. The city MPG is 19 and it is 29 on the highway. There's a couple interesting facts that I'd like to share about the RS3 as I'm very fond of this car and this engine. It's made of an aluminum block which means it's very lightweight. The head is shared with the Lamborghini Huracan and the Audi R8 which are V10s. And for the 8Y generation, the engine is largely unchanged compared to the previous generation when the RS3 first came to the United States and rocked the world. The Audi RS3 displays Audi's new design language that we're starting to see on most of the vehicles, where the grille surrounds actually go out and meet these headlights. These headlights right here are actually pretty special and I'd like to touch on those first. I'll include a short animation first of what we've I'm sure seen in many other videos and other press things of the RS3. Three checkered flag animation. That animation is part of the matrix design and that is a standard feature for the 8Y generation of the RS3. These headlights are also special because believe it or not they actually have a little bit of tint to them. That is standard and there's not an option to not have tint that is just how they come for the 8Y. And it looks really aggressive and goes great with all of the black optics. And black optics is the ne next thing I want to touch on. For the United States market the black optics is the only appearance package that is available for the exterior of the car. In other countries you can still get the aluminum optics trim where you have the lighter grill surrounds and lighter pieces here as well as the different wheel options but here in the states it comes standard with the black optics there is an additional package called the carbon package which is new for this generation it allows you to have carbon mirror caps carbon side blades and a carbon rear spoiler this car in particular does have that package so we'll highlight on those things as we're walking around the exterior continuing with Audi's Audi sport design language you're gonna see the three heritage vents along the side which you'll see right along here and then coming across as a part of the black optics package, you do get the black rings and badges you'll see along here. Now coming just below here, you'll see this interesting little hole punch right here. And this hole punch would be if the car had the availability to have the 360 camera, it would be right here. However, for the United States market, that is not an option that's available at least for model year 2024. I can't speak for further model years as we do not yet have those order guides. The front camera in the windshield, however, is standard on all of the RS3s. And that is because the car has adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist standard as well. Part of those sensors is also the six proximity sensors along the front and the rear. For the previous generation, we only had four in the front and four in the rear. And now continuing with the carbon package, you do have your carbon mirror caps, which I touched on when we were at the front of the vehicle. Now you get a close up of those. And then coming down a little bit, this is your carbon side skirt coming along here. And now remember that the 8Y RS3 only has black optics as an option. So you'll see you have your black optics trim coming all the way across all of your gloss black. Something that's unique to the 8Y, different from the previous generation, is all four door handles are activated for the keyless entry system. So by simply pressing your, putting your hand on the inside of the handle, that unlocks it, or simply touching the little hash mark on the outside that would lock that door handle. And continuing the wide aggressive look, these door handles are way wider, way longer, and a way more aggressive sculpted design. See how that body line of the door comes all the way in, scooping into perfect easy access for those. And now stepping back just a little bit, you'd be looking at this thing, it's still aggressive, it looks good, however it looks similar to the A3 and S3. 
and you'd be correct again. The rear quarter of the car has not been adjusted compared to the A3 and S3. And you may think that's strange, and it is a little bit. However, this is not something that's new. They did this in the previous generation of the RS3 as well. But you may not have noticed because that car was styled much more conservatively and not nearly as aggressive and awesome as this one. And so that brings us to the last piece of the carbon package. If you come a little bit closer over here, you get a chance to see the rear carbon spoiler that goes along the entire back of the car. All of the carbon pieces offered on this car are only offered in gloss carbon. There is not an option for a matte carbon finish. The wheels of the Audi RS3 are amazing. As you may have seen my latest video on the RS6 Avant, they killed it with the wheel design and they did it with the 8Y too. They look as good as some of our aftermarket wheels. And something I really like that Audi started doing is they're not doing a matte finish or a gloss finish. This is a beautiful satin finish on the black of these wheels. There are two color options available for this wheel and there's only one wheel design available for the 8Y RS3. When you option the black optics package, in addition to the satin black wheel, you do have your black rings and badges for the front and the of the vehicle. Previously in 2022 and 2023, this used to also include the black roof for select colors. However, that is now a standalone option, so you do not have to have the black optics package to be able to do the black painted roof. The front brakes are 14.8 inches and they do have a six piston front caliper. That is a slight change from the previous generation as it had an eight piston front caliper. They are 12.2 inches in the rear. Now, typically I like to talk about the different brake colors and all those other things in carbon ceramics. However, going along with other model year 24 vehicles, there is a current international shortage of carbon ceramic brakes. So there is not an option for carbon ceramic brakes for the 8Y for 2024. There is also only one brake color option. They used to have red brakes as an option However, that is now standard on all 8YRS3s from 2024 up. For this generation of RS3, Audi ditched the Magrite suspension system in favor of a more traditional valved damper setup. Audi says this is to increase on-track performance as well as comfort on the road. However, I have not yet had the chance to drive an 8Y RS3, so I can't answer to the comparison between the previous generation. This vehicle in particular is a customer car, and I want to thank that customer very much for allowing us to do this video. And in respect for him, we are not testing out things like the suspension or our next topic, the rear diff. By now, two years into the production of the 8Y RS3, I'm sure you've seen tons of videos and articles of people sliding these cars around and having tons of fun, and it looks really, really cool. The way that they are achieving these slides and drifts is because Audi completely redesigned the rear differential. To understand how it works on the new car, we need to understand and remember how it worked on the previous car. To explain this for everybody, I'm going to give you a very high level overview that may be a little bit anatomically incorrect, but understand that the point is the same. The Haldex based all wheel drive system used an electronically controlled clutch pack that was located at the end of the drive shaft. This allowed for a transfer of torque from the front to the rear. However, the clutch pack was placed in front of an open rear differential, which means the car and the systems have no way of controlling which rear wheel gets the torque. Fast forward to the new car and they've taken that same idea and concept and applied it in a much better way. Now, instead of having one clutch pack that separates the drive shaft and the rear differential, you now have two clutch packs, one on each side of the rear differential, meaning that power can flow into the rear differential. And now the computer can decide, depending on how you're driving and what mode you're in, which which side and which wheel gets the torque. This is really important while you're drifting as oftentimes you need to have the outside wheel spin faster to maintain your drift. The cool part is, is that when you're in the RS rear torque mode, the computer is so smart that it knows if you're switching side to side and it can change just like that between which wheels inside and which wheels outside to maintain the drift. We do hope that someday we are able to perform this in a video of ours. However, as mentioning, this is a customer car and out of respect for him, I'm gonna let him be the first one to try it out. The new RS3 comes in some striking color options. There's only two colors that are not shared between the previous generation and that would be Nardo Gray and Aura Blue Crystal. As far as the blue goes, that is been replaced by turbo blue, which you'll see right here. And there's also the option for tango red, which you'll see in this demonstration. However, those, both those colors have been discontinued for future ordering and will not be available for the rest of 2024 and new model years after that. There are two different colors that have not been shared on the previous generation, which are still available on this car, and they are truly very striking. That is Kimura Gray. The cool thing about this particular gray is it does have red flake in the paint and Python Yellow. I haven't yet seen a Python Yellow RS3, but I have seen an S3 and it's quite striking. 
The previous generation RS3 came standard with the panoramic sunroof, which you'll see right here. But there's a very interesting and new fact about the new panoramic sunroof. So if you come a little bit over here back to the 8Y, you'll see it still has the huge panoramic section. However, it goes all the way out. It doesn't have that black divider along here, making it even larger. And this is a perfect view where you get to see up close again the black roof, giving it that uniform look all the way back. The RS3 still has an impressive trunk for the car being so small. Coming inside, you're going to see it does have your standard layout with the carpet on the inside, and it even also has the privacy hooks, which you'll see along here. An interesting little fact is the standard carpeted floor mats that come with the car no longer have the RS logo down here on the bottom. However, if you do option it with the all-weather floor mats, and no matter what climate you're in, it's always good to have an all-weather, they do say RS3 along the side. Now going along with the cargo hooks, Audi also always thinks of the little ways that can make improve everything, including the fact of this is not a power trunk. However, there is a little handle right here, and if you swing with just enough force, you can get it to close without ever having to touch the exterior and damaging it or adding little scratches from dust. Let's try it out. Now onto the back of the RS3, something I want to highlight first is a really cool taillights. These also have that same matrix design with them, so they do have an animation when you lock and unlock the car. Something that is unique, standard for all RS3s here now for the States, is we do also have the dynamic turn signals for the front and the rear. of the aggressive back end, you'll see how wide this bottom diffuser is, and it even has the pieces of honeycomb poking out as it does go along with the front as well. And since it is an RS car, it's of course going to have the comically large oval exhaust tips. This exhaust is a little bit different than the previous generation, only because the tips in here do have this perforation and there are the valves located right inside. These oval pieces are separate than the, what's on the actual exhaust. The pieces themselves can be switched out for different colors. If you have the non-sport exhaust, it is a silver tip. Now let's have a real discussion about the Audi Sport exhaust specifically for the RS3. If you were about to order an RS6 and you were ready to put on an, a crop of itch exhaust on your RS6 and you think, ah, I'm not going to spend the thousand dollars on the Audi Sport exhaust, I'd agree with you. If you are buying one of these cars and you're going to be putting anything less than an 1100 turbo kit on it, I'd think you're silly to not do the Audi Sport exhaust because little known fact is it actually will flow all the way up to a thousand wheel horsepower. And as I'm well versed in the RS3s, I can tell you I've heard almost every different option offered for the RS3s as far as exhausts, and nothing sounds nearly as good as the optional Audi Sport exhaust. And the best part about it is it is valved. If you're in a quiet city, need to keep it quiet, just shut the valves, or if you're ready to let her go, just open them back up and you get to hear all of the five cylinder sounds. Before we hop in the interior, I always demonstrate how I fit in the back seat, with the front seat adjusted for my husband who's a little bit over six feet tall and I'm five, five and three quarters. However, we usually do that on the driver's side, but this time we're doing a little bit different because I wanted to highlight for the first time ever, the RS3 finally has front powered seats and on the driver's side it even has memory. So without further ado, let's hop in the back seat. And we know this is the smallest sedan that Audi offers. However, it still is pretty roomy for someone my size. You could still put someone who has a little bit longer legs back here. For me, I wouldn't mind taking a several hour trip in this. As you can also see, I have tons of room above my head too. Now in the interior of the RS3, the first thing I'm going to touch on is the new design of the seats. You'll see how aggressive they are and the honeycomb continues through here. If you were to option it with the RS design interior, these little sections along here would be red as they are the Dynamica sections. That is one that had the previous for the 2022 and 23s was offered in green. I don't know why, but every other place besides the US, Audi offers both those color options, the green and the red simultaneously. But for whatever reason, for 22 and 23, we got the green and now we have the option for the red. However, the seat stitching options have not changed between the 22 and 2024. You still have the option between black with black stitching, 
black with red stitching or black with green stitching. And now you have the option to add the RS design, which is the red sec sections. As I mentioned earlier, these seats are completely power. So you will see along here, there are different sections for your power controls, including lumbar, which is awesome. That is the only piece that was power in the previous generation. The only thing that's not is the manual leg extension. So we are still glad that we do have that option, but that is the only non-powered piece. Along in the interior, these carbon inlays are standard, and these are the matte inlays that go along the entire expanse, including over the MMI right along here. Coming down a little bit, you will see some more of the standard features. There is the wireless charger right here, and the color-changing interior ambient lighting is standard on the RS3 as well. This shifter pad is different for the 8Y compared to the previous generation, where you do have a different type of shifter here, which is more of a lever, so you can see instead of having the standard pull all the way back for the knob. Now, because the shifter is different, there's no way for you to slide it over to the side like you could in the previous generation to enter manual mode. To do that, you have to use either one of the paddles which are located on the back side of the steering wheel. If you're in any of the standard modes, which means non-RS modes, it will auto shift for you after you've been using the paddle. So it will time out effectively. If you're using RS Torque Rear or RS Performance Mode, it will not time out for you and will let you bang off the rev limiter. Audi absolutely killed it with the design of these new paddles because in the previous generation they were plastic that was supposed to look like metal and they didn't have the little RS cutouts at the top. Well, we're glad that they finally gave us real metal RS paddles. Now coming down a little bit you're going to see your first down here is going to be your RS3 logo on your floor mat but then we can't forget the illuminated door sills and coming down just a little bit further standard is the RS puddle lights and because this car has the technology package you do see your Bang & Olufsen audio system right along here. Coming over to the climate control panel you'll see you do have your standard heated seats. Heated seats are standard on every RS3 for front, passenger, and driver. You do have your front defrost, your rear defrost, your auto recirculation or manual recirculation. How to adjust the temps here using these toggles, so you can adjust it to wherever is comfortable. You can adjust also the direction of the air, or you can have it on auto and as well as sync to sync the two temperatures together. The master will be the driver's side. Or you can simply shut everything off by pressing this button. And then right here, you do have your drive select button. When, when you press it, it actually brings up this screen up top up here. These are your three standard modes. You have comfort, auto, and dynamic. Now, typically dynamic is our sport mode. However, for RS vehicles, there now is an RS button located here on the steering wheel, as well as some additional adjustments that can be made to either of these modes over here. And because this is the RS3, it has three special modes. You have RS individual, and by pressing this pencil over here, you can adjust any of these items along in here. There's so many things you can adjust, as well as the same type of adjustments in RS performance as well torque rear, when you press that, you do get this notification as you are putting it into this mode. And once you put it into this mode, if you come in a little bit closer in the virtual cockpit, you can see that it actually says torque rear and it switches you into the runway design of the layout. Now talking about the layouts of the center screen, we'll talk about the three different options that are available to you. So if you simply click home and then you click settings and then if you go into display and brightness, and then you go to virtual cockpit, that allows you to see your three different layouts. Now, RS Sport, that is the standard layout, which we've seen many times before. However, it has slightly different design than the previous generation. Coming back over, you do also have the RS Performance, which I like to call the boomerang design, which is this layout here. And then lastly, you have RS Runway. Now, if you see that one, that would be the runway layout we saw earlier, but if you come back over to configure, automatic activation of RS layout. And this is what that RS layout would be, which would be the runway design. Let's say if we weren't in the torque rear mode, so coming back over, simply pressing the RS button, it'll put us in individual, performance, or back to auto. And once it gets put in back to auto, it would flip back to the previous one that we had it set as. So right now, because we have it set as runway, it'll stay there. Otherwise, it'll go back to if we had it in regular RS Sport, and then if I were to simply press the RS button, it'll flip us into individual and it'll be in the runway design. Makes it really handy to have the car customize it to exactly how you want it and that way you know if any of your RS modes are activated because you'll be in RS one way design. Coming back to over to this screen here, we're gonna touch on vehicle and we're gonna go into RS monitor. This allows you to check on things that are going on in the vehicle, including the temperatures all the way around. You can also check on the G meter. Scrolling over, the other item that you can check on is your tire pressure monitor. All, all RS3s come with direct TPMS on all four wheels. That is something to keep a note if you are planning to get either a winter wheel and tire set, or if you're planning on doing aftermarkets, just know that you do have to have direct TPMS sensors in those wheels. Coming back over into the screen here, there's only a couple more things I'll touch on. Navigation, 
is a part of the technology package, so this is something that you can have as well. Your vehicle settings, which we've gone over most of those items in here. However, you do have enlightened visibility, exterior lighting, you can make sure to turn on your exit and entry lighting, that's where it'll actually go into the RS3 layout. So if your car's not doing that, just make sure that exit and entry lighting is turned on. As I mentioned earlier, this car comes standard with the multicolor changeable interior colors. So if we come back over just a little bit, we'll go back to interior lighting, and using this pencil, you can go in and adjust between any of the 30 different color options that are available to you. And these are items that you can change at any point. The RS3 comes standard with Audi's wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. So if you go into here, you can see any of the connected devices. All the other features and functionality of the car is the same on the A3 and the S3. In both of those videos, I've gone in depth more on those features. So if you have questions about those, please check out those videos or leave them down below in the comments. As a part of the technology package, Audi now offers heads up display, which is a first on all A segment vehicles. If you come in a little bit closer over here, you can see up there in the hologram of the description of the screen. However, when you put it into one of your RS modes, so if you're in RS performance, it switches the layout so that you can see your engine oil temperature and when the vehicle is running, like if I were to start it now, and to put it in gear, you can see what gear it's in as well. Thanks for watching this video on the 2024 Audi RS3. I had a ton of fun making it for you. If you have any questions that I haven't answered about this vehicle or other vehicles in particular, feel free to leave it down below in the comments or come check one out at Audi Omaha. And you never know, maybe we'll be adding one of these to our fleet someday. Thanks for watching.